everyone, welcome back to the Coos Art Museum's online art lessons where we bring the art into your home. Today we're going to be focusing on how to draw a rainbow trout. Then in the next video or two we'll be going over the painting process. The supplies you're going to need for the first part of the video are paper, pencil, and an eraser. Once you have those, let's get started. A really important tool to have while you're drawing something is a reference photo. Now I chose to draw a fish because I'm not really familiar with fish. It's not something I draw a lot of. And I wanted to take you along the process I use to figuring out how to draw something that I'm not super good at. I found this photo over on Wikipedia, but of course there are a lot of wildlife websites you can check out, or of course our local library, or if you're feeling super adventurous, you can go out and go fishing and catch a real fish to take a peek at. Now it's time to block in the shape of our fish. So the more you practice with something, the better you're going to get. And as you draw, you may find that sometimes your drawings don't turn out as well as you want them to, but it's not a bad thing. In fact, we learn more from our mistakes than we do from things that we succeed at. So one thing I've learned about drawing fish is I tend to make them taller, thicker, higher. <laughs> I don't make them skinny enough. I make them too, too tall. So to help me get my shapes and proportions correct, I'm going to use a long, narrow rectangle shape to help block in my fish. Now the fish body shape itself is like a squished lemon. Then it moves down to the tail, which is kind of like a triangle shape. As you're blocking in your fish, remember there are two main shapes you wanna watch for. That's your positive shape, the shapes that you can actually touch, and your negative shapes. So because I'm drawing my fish inside of this long rectangle shape, the negative shape is the space around the fish. So back by the tail and as the head comes down to a point, that's the negative space, which is just as important as our positive shapes. It's because of those shapes that I'm realizing my fish still is not long enough. So I'm gonna go ahead and stretch them out a little bit. That's why it's really important to start off these sketches with something that you can erase, like a pencil with an eraser. Once you have this overall shape sketched out, then we can begin looking at the more detailed bits and bobs of our fish, which is the fins. Now again, I'm not super familiar with fish, so I'm gonna go back to my reference photo to count how many fins does this fish actually have. If I look at this fish from a profile side view, I'm seeing five different fins, not including his tail at the end. So we have two on the back, two on the bottom, and one on the side. Well, there's one on each side, but because it's a profile, I'm only seeing one of them. Once I have the fins in place, now I can start looking at really the detail of his facial features, like his mouth. Looking at my reference photos, I can see that his upper lip kind of comes down in a hook shape over the top of his bottom lip. If you're having troubles with a certain part of your drawing, do a special study of just that feature. It's easier to draw 10 hands and figure out how to draw them right than to draw 10 people with hands and try to figure it out. Just focus on the part that you need help with. So I did a quick sketch of the fish's head to kind of work out all the details first. After the mouth, I'll put in the eyes and the gills. And at this point, we should have just about everything blocked out. Now, if it's not, if you're still trying to get your fish drawn in there, remember you could pause this video, but this is the part where you want to make sure that your sketch is the way you want it. Before you get into coloring or painting or cleaning up your drawing. If something's off in the sketch part, fix it now because it's a lot easier to fix it now than it is to try to fix it later when you've finished painting it.
gonna go ahead and add a little bit of color to my fish, but I'm really excited about our next video. I'm gonna show you some easy tips on transferring a sketch onto watercolor paper, and of course, how to watercolor your fish. If you're not already, hit that subscribe button to our YouTube channel so that you don't miss out on that video. If you'd like more information about the Coos Art Museum and things that we're doing, you can follow us on Instagram and Facebook. I hope you had a fantastic time drawing fish with me today. If you did, I'd love to see what you're creating, so make sure to tag us in your social media posts by using the hashtag CamArtAtHome. But until our next video, stay creative!